In Japan, bathrooms and kitchens often come in a box. They're called system baths and system kitchens, and they solve a lot of problems. When you order a system bath, a lot of decisions are made for you, such as what will the tub look like or what tile will you use? Because in a system bath, it's all one big piece of plastic. But in our case, plastic wasn't what we were looking for in a bath. So that meant we were going to have to come up with some answers ourselves. Let's start with the bathtub. I was charmed by the pictures online of oval-shaped tubs floating on a sea of fancy tile. That was what a bathroom should look like, I thought, fully realizing, of course, that there was a different perspective here in Japan. Japan is the land of the bath, and the bathrooms here talk to you, warm your bath water to just the right temperature, and they'll even call you when the bath is ready. They'll tell you when you're using too much energy, and when the water starts to cool down, they'll warm it up for you. But all that functionality comes as part of the system bath, and not in the oval bathtub on a sea of tile. Those kinds of bathrooms are as silent as their pictures in Dwell or House Beautiful, and functionality begins and ends with turning on the tap and pulling the plug out of the drain. Unfortunately, we've lived in Japan long enough to value the bathroom as a service-driven conversationalist, and that meant we were going to have to hammer some square pegs into round holes. The square peg was the bathtub itself. Back home in the US, you turn on the faucet and the water fills the tub. That is pretty much the beginning and end of it. But in Japan, your bathtub is concerned with your comfort, so the bathtub water is circulated around in the tub and through the tub and the boiler to make sure that the temperature stays at your setting. This circulation process is done at your bidding with the push of a button, and it is announced when the tub is finished. The tub will also let you know when it is full and when the temperature is just right. Well, all that functionality means a typical tub needs some substantial modifications. We need to drill holes and make space for the devices that accomplish those tasks. Perhaps you're beginning to see why the hot water heaters in Japan have semiconductors. But we didn't stop with that because there is a special type of hot water heater that creates tiny micro bubbles in the bath kind of carbonated spa-like bath water. And yeah, we ordered that too. So that means the old world tub we wanted installed was going to have to go through some serious transformations. But a system bath would have just been a plug and play. The other square peg was the tiling. I'll get into that in some more detail in the future. But system baths have floors, walls, and ceilings, so we had to create an alternative. And of course, that alternative is tile. And let's just say that is a bunch of tile. We never really think of how tall or short a kitchen cabinet should be until we're faced with the question, how tall do you want your kitchen cabinet to be? I'd always believed that all kitchen cabinets are the same height and people just have to adjust. But here in Japan, the countertops are notably lower. But I even thought that was simply one of those differences between cultures. It never really struck me as something we would have control over. So when the question came, I confess we didn't have an answer. But I knew that with power, comes responsibility, and that was a decision we needed to get right. After cooking in a Japanese kitchen for more than a decade now, I can say with confidence that the height of the countertop makes a difference. In fact, working over a low counter will actually start to bother my back after a short time. Really, it's true. So I wanted to do something about that. But none of the system kitchens in Japan really took my back problems into consideration. So 
I needed an alternative, and that came in the form of IKEA. IKEA kitchens are well known back in the US, and I'd seen the same setups in the IKEA showrooms in Japan, but for some reason I never considered IKEA until I started to notice so many IKEA kitchens up here in Hakuba. I think the reason for this is primarily because I have put together a lot of IKEA furniture in my life, but I just never had the confidence nor the time to invest in putting together my own kitchen. But when you build a house, it turns out that there are other people who can put together your IKEA kitchen. And so we went to IKEA and found a kitchen. But we couldn't buy the kitchen because we needed a phone consultation first, and then another one, and another one. They were tough to arrange too. There were hardly any appointments available and we had to wait more than a month, but finally we got things squared away. It's a good thing we had those consultations though because we needed help even though we didn't know we needed help. The final layout was a hundred times more efficient and user-friendly than the initial layout, and it was even cheaper too. At IKEA, we had some real experts coaching us to make better decisions, and the end result was a cabinet system that will work. Or at least, we believe it will work, but we haven't tried it yet, obviously. When it arrived, Shimokawa-san's team brought it to the house and started putting it together. They were finished in a day or so and suddenly the empty space where we imagined cabinets became a space with cabinets. Now we're really close to the finish line and things are getting more and more exciting than ever. And we were able to avoid the system bath and system kitchen. <laughs>